fake news. Fake news, folks. Everybody thought our boy Trump was crazy when he went around yammering about fake news this, fake news that. And I'll be honest, I'm a Republican, but you know what? I'm a pretty pragmatic guy. I call it like I see it. I like to call things down the middle. And I was starting to think that dude was kind of making some stuff up. He was getting a little weird there. You know, the whole January 6th thing. That got a little wild, right? But it don't look like he made up that fake news stuff, folks. I have become the victim of fake news, right? These freaking liberal chode tuggers over at Scene Magazine just slapped me on the cover of their magazine. Another article filled with nothing but mistruths, misleading text, and lies. Let's unpack it. Welcome to the show, folks. This is the show where I speak my mind about all things real estate. And today... Today we got to talk about Scene Magazine, man. These folks over there sitting around, I guess the skinny jeans are getting too tight. The brain ain't flowing to the, the brain as much as it should be because they're just making stuff up about Holton Wise and what we do here in Cleveland. I'm pretty, well, I don't know if I'm upset about it. I don't know if I should be flattered or upset. I mean, on one hand, I'm flattered, right? Y'all put me on the magazine, the cover of the magazine, in fact, that's, Mighty fine of you, folks, but the fact of the matter is, it's fucking garbage. Don't worry, I knew I was going to get mad and throw it. I got a second one. Holding a second one. But the, the problem is, it's garbage. This is a garbage, garbage article, right? Now, part of the reason I don't like the article is because I don't think the guy who wrote the article has any idea what he's talking about. We'll, we'll unpack a little bit about that, but the other part of the article that really chaps my ass is just the blatant lies. I mean, to be honest with you, I was starting to think Trump was crazy when he was talking about all the fake news out there, but, oh, dude, I don't know. After just watching this fucking asshole uh, just just pull facts out of his butt <laughs> when writing this article, and this ain't the first article Scene Magazine has written about us, uh, you know, I gotta say, there might be something to that, man. So I think we need to take these folks to task, right? Scene Magazine, if you're gonna publish... Uh, articles, you're going to publish news. Fine, publish news. This guy, Mark Opria, right? We got very different viewpoints, right? He's, you know, drinking craft beer, eating vegan burgers, wearing tight jeans, drinking a fancy latte. That's cool, bro, whatever. Do your thing. I'm a blue-collar guy. I work for my money. But, hey, whatever. You could have your uh, ideals, just like I got my ideals. You know what I'm saying? But at least... Be honest, right? Be honest. Don't just make stuff up, pal. So what we got here? Holton Wise, a flood of covert LLCs, and out-of-state investors have radically changed the local housing market. Is there anything Cleveland can do to fight back, right? The article, like, it's just a mess, really. Like, th the whole article is, is supposed to be, like, some slam job, I think, accusing Holton Wise of being horrible slumlords uh, and a little bit of racism tied in there and just, you know, fight back. Like, fight back against what? Like, we're destroying the city, I guess? But, like, none of that actually uh, holds water. They don't have any facts to back any of that up because, I mean, that's not what we're doing, number one. Uh, and, you know, they like to hit, you know, their trigger points, right? The libs, the progressives, they like to hit their trigger points, right? Like the slumlord shirt, right? Obviously, that drives them nuts. I mean, that was the point of it, right? The point of the slumlord shirt uh, isn't to glorify being a slumlord. If anybody's actually seen the product Holton Wise puts out there, uh, we are far from being slumlords, so it's it's a satire. It's a joke on these friggin' liberal dipshits. Uh, anytime a landlord's a landlord, they just accuse him of being a slumlord for anything. Oh, I'm a tenant! I didn't get paid rent! I got evicted! Slumlord! Oh, that guy bought a foreclosed house and he picked it up! Slumlord! Like, that's all they do, right? So the article starts off, last summer in the midst of his mayoral campaign, Justin Bibb walked up the front stairs of a dilapidated house in Detroit Shoreway to a podium. Behind him stood Jay Westbrook and Rob Render, two housing policy advocates. This is all, like, on a Tuesday morning. Like, shouldn't these three dudes be at work? Like, geez. But anyway, two housing policy advocates and a party of volunteers in white shirts reading Bib. Nearby there were two other shirts, one 
emblazoned slumlord and the other stamped I love evictions, right? They can't handle the shirts, right? It's weird, though, because we sell a lot of different shirts. We got the I Love Eviction shirts, but we also have this shirt. I spent $100 to fight evictions, right? This shirt that is part of our charity to fight evictions, right? Because any Tom, Dick, and Harry can go, oh, that person got evicted. That's horrible. All right, bro, no problem. We won't evict that person. How about you go ahead and pay their rent? Oh, I'm paying their rent. Well, why? You want this random owner to pay their rent. So anybody out there who's got a problem with evictions, hey, I started a charity. I don't see y'all writing newspaper articles about my charity. Fact of the matter is, anytime there's an eviction, folks, it's because somebody didn't pay rent. Either the person living there's got to pay rent or somebody else has to pay their rent, right? If you guys want to see change, you want to see people avoid evictions, that's great. Open up your wallet. Don't just run around and cry like a little bitch complaining that people are evicting people when you won't put your money where your mouth is. But yet you're asking random citizens to pay for other people's livelihood. It doesn't make sense. They must be slumlords because they're not going to support random strangers, even though me screaming at the top of my lungs, I'm over here stretching out my skinny jeans, yelling about how they won't pay for other people, other grown adults to live. They won't pay for their housing because these grown adults are too lazy to do it themselves. But, oh, no, me? No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to donate 100 bucks myself. No, 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 no. That's not what I do. I'm a liberal journalist. All I do is cry, cry, cry. I never, ever put my money where my mouth is. Hence, the slumlord shirt, right? Those people must be slumlords because they won't allow other people to steal from them. It's weird, though. It's almost like I knew when I created this shirt that I was going to trigger a bunch of woke-ass journalists who didn't comprehend how economics work and I'd get myself a bunch of free PR, Scene Magazine, Netflix, Hassan Minaj, Patriot Game. Weird, kind of like I know how this business works. Wow. Anyway, moving on. We are here today on the footsteps of 7911 Eve. One of the homes managed by Holton Wise Property Group, Bibb, said Holton Wise has used redlining maps to help investors continue to exploit these communities. It is frustrating, and it sickens me to the core. For years, Holton Weiss has run rampant in our city, buying up properties from Glenville to Cadell, and nothing, not a darn thing, has been done to stop them. Now, this is, this is where the article doesn't even make any sense, right? The guy kind of goes on and on and on, and you have to read the article. Obviously, I'll link to it below if you haven't read it yet, but uh, the guy goes on and on about us buying up all these properties, managing properties in Cleveland in they, they, they don't even know what they're accusing us of. Like, they don't have a deep enough understanding of real estate, economics, any anything really, to understand what they're accusing me of. Because on one hand, essentially, the gist I got out of the article was they believe it's predatory when Holton Wise goes into a neighborhood, buys and manages a whole bunch of properties, right? We're exploiting the community. We're taking houses off the market. It's bad when Holton Wise comes into our neighborhood and gobbles up all the properties. They're horrible, they're racist, they're bad. But on the other hand, in the article, they also got mad because there were other neighborhoods in Cleveland that we didn't buy a bunch of properties or take over a lot of properties. So Holton Wise is bad. They won't take over properties in this neighborhood. They won't buy up all the properties and gobble up all the real estate. They must be racist. So which one is it, liberals? Are we racist when we do buy properties? Or are we racist when we don't buy properties, right? And then, you know, the misinformation, right? Like uh, Glenville to Cadell, like... Glenville's a, a neighborhood that Holton Wise doesn't have, like, a very large footprint. And they talk about, like, later in the article, vilifying us for not having a large footprint in that area, which, again, is bad. But we have a large footprint in Old Brooklyn, which apparently is also bad. So, like, which one is it, guys? Can we get our facts straight? I mean, seriously. The question of whether it's simply the offensive language and brash behavior of Holton Wise that has rankled some Clevelanders, or whether Holton Wise has earned a reputation of exploiting underserved communities and deteriorating neighborhoods is one that those involved in local real estate and rental market have asked themselves and others for a while now. Bibb's campaign move just put the question into the public 
sphere. Now, they go on to talk about this chick, right? Uh, Rose and Sethman, okay? People in their 30s, right? And the long and the short of it is they're trying to buy houses in Tremont. And moral of the story, uh, it's a seller's market in Cleveland, much like it's a seller's market in the entire country, right? Uh, there is a undersupply of housing, okay? And that is a nationwide phenomenon, which is actually caused by, in part, mostly in part, to the coronavirus shutdowns, which caused lumber prices to go way, way up, as well as many other building materials. Uh, it caused a slowdown in new construction. If there's not a whole bunch of new houses being built, uh, the amount of houses on the market, right? There's less houses on the market. Supply, demand, right? The whole supply, demand thing. I know that's lost on liberals, economics, all lost on liberals, right? But no, it must be Holton Weiss who did it. But anyway, so they're just writing this, uh, you know, little powwow crybaby story about these people who a few years ago, uh, the houses were cheaper, but now they're more expensive, which again, totally makes sense and is totally consistent with the rest of the article, right? Because remember, the gist of the article is Holton Wise goes into neighborhoods, they're horrible slumlords, and they ruin properties, they destroy properties. That makes a lot of sense, right? We go into neighborhoods, we gobble up the properties, we make them worse, and then that in turn makes the pricing go up, right? Because that makes a lot of sense, right? Somebody explained to me the thought process and how we purposely destroy properties, we destroy neighborhoods, but the pricing goes up. Secondly, uh, back to the eviction thing and all the liberals crying about evictions. And by the way, not a lot of people are donating to my charity. But the other thing, it's weird. Like when there are people who are being evicted, I, like many Americans, think there should be some type of government uh, subsidy, some type of government assistance to help those people, right? Because what I don't believe is America can arbitrarily force citizen A to, to pay for the livelihood of citizen B. That makes no sense. This is America. You can't just be like, this guy, this guy, and this guy. You are responsible for that guy, that guy, and that guy's livelihood. That don't make any fucking sense, people. But you know what does make sense? When there are actually people in need, the government should step in with some type of... Uh, you know, subsidies, some way to help house those people, right? We don't want a bunch of people homeless. But the thing is, the thing is with the government, folks, the government doesn't do anything to generate revenue other than collect taxes. Taxes are the only source of revenue the government has. And uh, it's weird because when prices go from 195 to 230 that means the taxes go up. Taxes are what pay for all the subsidies, Right. Democrats, liberals, what do you guys constantly cry and whine about? You want more free stuff. You want people not to have to pay back their student loans. You want people to have free health care. You want people to have free housing. Tax revenue is needed to pay for it. It does, A unicorn doesn't just fart out the fucking money. It's got to come from somewhere, right? So, recap. We're liberals. We want free stuff. But at the same time, we are mad that housing prices and housing taxes have gone up. But also, we are mad because Holton Wise ruined neighborhoods, causing the prices to go up. But also, we are mad because there are some neighborhoods Holton Wise didn't buy any properties in. And we are mad because they didn't buy properties there and ru ruined them. I think that's what you're saying, right? That's pretty pretty sure that's what you're saying. Then this dude goes on and on about all these, like, LLCs and, and stuff, and it's just, like, writing blatantly misleading stuff in this article, right? They're talking about Memphis 4 LLC is, a, is an LLC that owns property in Cleveland. XYZ LLC. XYZ2 LLC. All these properties in Cleveland. Folks, let's be clear. I have nothing to do with any of these LLCs listed here. Those are not my LLCs. I do not own those LLCs. Like, this has nothing to do with me. This is just, uh, you know, misleading journalism, right? And you got this chick right here. 
This whole article is supposed to be this big slam piece about how predatory Holton Wise is, right? And this is like the only factual thing they can get. Uh, they found, this is the dirt they dug up on Holton Wise, right? In March 2018, a property being managed by Holton Wise was late to pay a combined $300 registration and late fee, which Martin said the city is serious about enforcing. All right. In Cuyahoga County, folks, and in all the other counties as well, you have to register your rental properties, okay? Holton Wise has over 1,000 rental properties, okay? The biggest dirt that they got on us is four years ago, two properties out of freaking thousands, all the thousands of units we've managed, that we manage currently and we have managed over the years, right? Like collectively, thousands of rental units. We're such a horrible slumlord that the biggest dirt they got is it looks like uh, one of our two of our registrations got mailed in a little bit late and we paid the associated late fee. Okay, cool, great, good job, guys. Freaking great job, Mark. Crack journalism, right? But you know what, Mark? I ain't mad at you, bro. I ain't mad at you, man. You, you seem like a nice guy, right? Uh, we don't agree on, um, you know, our politics, and uh, I don't think you're in your element when you're talking about real estate. But hey, I think you're a nice guy, man. I think. I think, you know, you're probably a good dude. You're doing your thing. You're a nice, fancy writer. You even offer tutoring on your website. So if anybody out there uh, has a kid and they want to teach their kid how to write cunty things such as bespeckled student at Parma High School as opposed to saying dude with fucking glasses like a normal human being, go ahead and get some tutoring from Mark because Mark – is a good guy, right? I got nothing against Mark. Mark, maybe one day when this is all done, me and you, we'll sit down and we'll have a nice big vegan burger. Two, please. No, I think I was drinking a lot. Bespeckled. God, what a cunty way to, to word something. Anyway, uh, this, this though, this is what I really take issue with, right? Uh, the difference in ideology. Okay, fine. That's par for the course. Uh, and again, like I said, Mark. No issues with you personally, your ideology, that's fine. No issues with the fact that there clearly was not a chest hair in sight in your headshot. Totally cool, bro. Again, you want to get a vegan burger, I'm fine with that. But this is really where I get upset. This is where all integrity you had goes out the window. This is where any respect I could have possibly had for you as a journalist goes out the window. Before Wise became the loudmouth, filtered list guide for the newbie investor stock, he was a bespeckled student at Parma High School. At 18, unsure of any career prospects, he took a job as a gas station attendant. In 2007, he dropped out of Cuyahoga Community College to manage a radio shack and later worked for an invisible fence company. In 2008, in the midst of the largest real estate crash in American history, Wise opted to take up investing. His mother urged him to buy a home with two housing credits, 8000 from Obama and 8000 from Parma. And 2550 down, Wise bought his first property, which he'd rent out to his brother-in-law. I always wanted to be a landlord, he told the podcast Land Academy. You buy a house using someone else's money, and then somebody else pays off your loan. As soon as I heard that, I'm like, sold. Now, <clears throat> you might be like, why is JY so upset about this particular... Uh, slide he's got up here, this particular paragraph. Why am I so mad? Because there is so many untruths and outright lies in here. There's just a whole bunch of fake news. This guy's literally making stuff up. Now, Mark Opria 
as big of a chode as he is, is not anywhere near as big as of chode as his colleague Sam Allard. Sam Allard is another doucher from Cleveland scene. And this guy, this guy has absolutely no integrity. I'm going to go through all the lies in that paragraph and the rest of Mark's article here shortly. But this dude, this piece of shit right here, this guy doesn't give a fuck about accuracy. Uh, Mark Opria, his lies were all annoying, but they were small lies. This guy, though, what a piece of shit he is. He wrote this article. Justin Bibb issues eviction notice to predatory lender Holton Wise. He popped that thing out, uh, I don't know, four, five, six months ago, right? What a piece of crap Sam Allard is. You want to know why? All you got to do is look at the top comment on Facebook. How is Holton Wise a predatory lender? They are not even a lender. Crazy, right? Holton Wise, we're not a lender. We don't loan money. We are not a real estate lender. This piece of shit cares so little about journalistic integrity and the facts that he published a fucking article calling us a predatory lender when we're not even in the business of loaning money. Why didn't you just post that Holton Wise runs a predatory pizza shop, you piece of shit? It'd be the same same amount of accuracy. So Sam Millard is by far, by far, the uh, the worst of these two gentlemen. But hey, Scene Magazine, in general, isn't a stranger uh, to being in hot water uh, over less than accurate reporting allegations. Enough said. We'll just leave this here for a second. I don't have any idea uh, how this all played out, but I don't know. Based on what I'm seeing with the reporting out of my boy, Sam Allard and Mr. Skinny Jeans Opera. Looks like these dudes are playing a little fast and loose uh, with the facts. And let's go through those facts, right? And here's the thing. Sam is is, is a much worse offender than Mark, I think. Uh, but the thing that bothered me about Mark's article, none of these lies are, are necessarily big or even, like, really matter in the grand scheme of things, but it's just fucked up. That uh, this guy claims to be a journalist, but he's he's, he's really uh, just writing fiction. He's just making shit up, right? A speckled student at Parma High School. Again, first of all, bro, you, what? you can't just say guy that wears glasses? Like, dude, I literally had to Google that when I read that. Like, I read it, and I'm like, a speckled student, like, the fuck does that does that mean I wear glasses I thought that but I'm like who the fuck would say something that fucking stupid but anyway that's what that means but anyway the moral of the story is I I didn't even wear glasses till I was like early 20s so uh you just made that up again doesn't matter but you just made it up uh he dropped out of Cuyahoga Community College to manage the Radio Shack I never dropped out of Cuyahoga Community College I graduated with a business degree from Cuyahoga Community College not that big a deal but you just made that up uh let's see 2008, I uh, rented a house to my brother-in-law. Didn't have brother-in-law in 2008. I didn't get married uh, till about nine years after that, right? So wasn't even married nine years after that. How the hell did I have a brother-in-law? That's weird. So right here, this paragraph, three lies. Not the biggest lies in the world, but just three things this dude made up. Uh, okay, this is a good one, right? <clears throat> Nobody loves what we're doing today, says James Wise, the then 31-year-old co-founder of Holton Wise Property Group. In an April 2018 video on the company's YouTube channel, in front of him outside in the Cleveland cold, his partner John Holton and his crew, clad with logoed hoodies, Wise is filming a tenant on the east side of Cleveland getting evicted. The YouTube video in question, featured in the Tenants from Hell series, is one of Wise's channel's most popular, with 1,265,607 views as of January, January 2022. And, uh, and, uh, <clears throat> And one that's come to represent his brand of real estate management. One that is part wrestling heel and part vlogger, bro. I, I like that one. I like that one. <laughs> well, the vast majority of bulk home buyers and property managers tend to keep out of the public eye. Wise with his profanity-laden newsletter. 
profanity. Like, does that seem like something I would do? Come on, y'all! Controversial merchandise. Rents due, reads a popular sweater. Yeah, boom, right there. Rents due, folks. Use promo code HWTV10 to get yourself 10% off on adult merchandise. Uh, reads a popular sweater. And rant, uh, Ranty Industry Tell-Alls has done the exact opposite, and it's earned a bad reputation among serious housing wonks and suit-wearing... Re- what in the fuck is a housing wonk? I, I had to fucking Google that again. But hey, again, folks, nothing against Opria personally. If you want your kids to learn how to type in the most cunty way possible, again, go to markopria.com. He offers tutoring. But anyway... Uh, The whole reason I had this particular part of the article up is just another lie. Lie number four. Just blatant, bold-faced lie. Uh, That video, it's Tenants from Hell, episode eight, right? It's the one where the tenant, which, by the way, again, this must make us horrible slumlords. That video was a tenant had been stealing uh, from a client of ours. This guy was just a regular guy, regular Joe, like me, like you, uh, not not really like you, Opera. His his pants fit. Uh, but he's just a regular guy, and this tenant had been stealing from him for seven months. And on eviction day, uh, when we kicked her out, she drove away in her Cadillac Escalade. All right? Chomp on that. But anywho, the thing that pisses me off is you just made this up. Tenant on the east side of Cleveland getting evicted. I, I remember that property. I remember that account. That house was on, uh, I believe, West 44th or West uh, 48th. Um, like right in the Brooklyn Center neighborhood, bro. That is not an east side neighborhood. Again, is it like a horrible, slanderous thing to say, like your boy Sam Allard calling me a predatory lender? No, but like, bro, you're just pulling facts out of your ass. And how do you get your hand in those tight-ass skinny jeans to reach something out of your ass? I don't understand. Uh, And this, this is the thing. That pissed me off the most about this article. All the other stuff, you could try to paint me in a bad light. I get it. Again, part of the reason the the clothing line got created was to trigger people like you uh, and to get uh, (coughs) all this free publicity you have afforded us because nobody with a fucking brain is going to listen to anything you have to say, Opera. But this, this really pissed me off. This pissed me off the most. Now, Opera tried to come into my office and sit down for an hour and I wouldn't do it because I knew he worked at scene who has no integrity and I knew he would twist everything I said so I gave him a quote in writing so he could actually quote me correctly so he wouldn't lie about what I said and the prick still fucking lied this is what he said wise declined a request to be interviewed for this story if your readers have an actual interest in learning about this topic Wise wrote in an email, and not just more of typical progressive propaganda. They should tune in to Holt Mice TV. Nah, that's not what I said, Opera. By the way, here is, uh, here's what he said when he reached out to me. <clears throat> hey, my name's Mark Opria, and I'm a journalist based here in Cleveland. I'm currently working for Scene Magazine on a freelance basis. I'm reaching out to you because for the past two months, I've been researching a story on business buyers and investors in Northeast Ohio real estate market and will be inevitably be writing about Holton Wise. <clears throat> As of now, the story angle will focus on how business buyers are influencing the market for the better or and for the worse, and how they're operating during COVID. That's weird. I didn't hear one fucking word about COVID in this article. Who are all their investors? What kind of properties are they buying? And how does Holton Wise fit into this economy? These are the kinds of questions I'm asking. I want to schedule a one-hour sit-down interview with you sometime before December 15th, My first deadline, because of your notoriety, I think the piece would lack big time without your involvement. If you have any questions about the piece, don't hesitate to ask. Wow, Mark, you seem like a real stand-up guy, dude. I would love to smash a vegan burger with you, bro. You seem really nice. But, again, I figured that was going to be a little bait and switch, and you would just lie about every single thing that I said. Because this ain't my first rodeo, folks. I've been quoted in newspaper articles before, and it seems like the tighter the skinny jeans are, the less accurate the reporting gets, right? So me being the savvy dude that I am, I was like, hmm, 
I thought about it for a minute. I'm like, should I sit down? He seems like a real nice fellow, right? Uh, maybe uh, he wants to write a fair and, and uh, buy an unbiased article. But no, he works for Scene. They literally just posted a piece calling me a predatory lender when I don't lend money. So what I said to him was, quote me. Sitting down for an interview with a publication whose journalistic integrity is so low that they'd publish a piece calling my company a predatory lender when Holton Wise is not now or ever even a lender is not something I have any interest in doing. If your readers have an actual interest in learning about this topic and not just more of the typical progressive propaganda scene magazine regularly publishes, they should tune into Holton Wise TV. This is lie number five. <laughs> Because, again, that is not what he posted. Y'all remember what he posted. Wise declined, Wise declined a request to be interviewed for this story. If your readers have an actual interest in learning about this topic, Wise wrote in an email. And not just more of typical progressive propaganda. They should tune in to Holton Wise TV. You left a few fucking details out of that there, Mark. It's weird. It's like I knew you are going to lie, so I wrote it down so I had proof of how the conversation went. Fucking weird. Uh... And then uh, this is just more misleading stuff. And this is how the whole article is written. This kind of chapped me a little bit, right? Uh, it, it, he did this, uh, his style of writing, uh, I guess it's not technically a lie from a technical standpoint, but what he did is he tried to write in a way uh, where he mentions me and then he mentions something completely unrelated to my company, but the way the average reader picks it up uh, it makes it seem like my company did it, but, you know, he doesn't exactly cross the threshold of slander uh, because he didn't technically say I did it, even though he made you infer that I did it. See, that is because he's got, you know, this pedigree, right, this, this amazing writing style, folks. So, again, if you're interested in all of that cunty way of writing and you want to say fancy words like bespeckled, I suggest you get your kids lessons. MarkOpria.com, folks. He offers tutoring. But this is what I'm talking about. To demonstrate her grievances, Lucas Bauer took me on a tour of several streets close to the main thoroughfare in Old Brooklyn. On foot, we set off west on Stanford, passing 80 to 100-year-old homes in various conditions. That one used to go for 80. Lucas Bauer set of one on Stanford. Now it's 125000 on Memphis Avenue, Lucas, Lucas Bauer pointed out various rentals that are either associated with Holton Wise or with another LLC of some sort. So just say it like you mean it. They're either mine or they're completely unfucking related to mine. <laughs> the complaints overwhelm here. Here's one, one stairs are caving in. This one needs a paint job. See what I'm saying? The way this fucking prick wrote this is the average reader who can't say fancy dancy words like bespeckled reads Holton Wise, horrible slumlords. This house has stairs caving in. This one needs a paint job. But that's not what the fucking asshole said. He's making it look like that. So it's essentially this is Holton Wise's house. Here's a completely unrelated house that has nothing to do with Holton Wise and the stairs are caving in. Here's another house that has not a single fucking thing to do with Holton Wise and it needs a paint job. Like, seriously? And on top of that, logically pick it up, folks. Again, the way he's writing this, he's trying to make you believe Holton Wise is this horrible slumlord. By the way, HWTV10. Get yourself 10% off on any of our merchandise. Trying to make you think Holton Wise is this horrible slumlord. But in the same paragraph, this Lucas Bauer chick, I don't even know who the fuck she is, is complaining that the houses used to be worth 80 Now they're worth 125 Which one is it? Did I destroy the neighborhood by letting my houses go to shit and have stairs caving in? Or that they need a paint job? Or did I increase the value of the neighborhood by 45000 therefore increasing tax revenue for the city of Cleveland that can be utilized as government subsidies for the underprivileged, that can be utilized for municipal services? Which one is it? Pick one, guys. Come on. And again, this is how the they ended this. <clears throat> As to why Holton Weiss is only two registered rental properties in Slavic Village, 
uh, Germanic left. I think he was a council guy over there or something. I, I don't know. By this point, I was very confused reading this article. It was a long one. Well, according to their statements, he said, our neighborhood's a war zone. So, again, we're mad that Holton Wise goes into neighborhoods and buys houses. We have to stop Holton Wise when they come into our neighborhood and take over properties. That's racist. But they didn't do any properties over here. Holton Wise isn't taking over properties in this neighborhood. They're not investing over here. That's bad. We have to stop them. That's racist. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.